One year after the remarkable protest movement demanding deep political and democratic reforms, the transformation that was hoped for to address long-standing challenges has still not materialized. Delays in holding local government elections and in reconstituting provincial councils under the 13th Amendment have limited people's right to political participation and the free expression of voters. Our office continues to receive cases of misuse of tear gas and water cannons during demonstrations, affecting protesters and media personnel. Initiatives by victims to memorialize their loved ones have also been obstructed. These measures restricting the right to protest will only generate more tension in the country as they prevent people from expressing their grievances and engaging in critical debate. The report provides an analysis of concerns with some forthcoming legislation, in particular the proposed anti-terrorism bill that will replace the Prevention of Terrorism Act and the new law to regulate media broadcasting. It urges a moratorium on the use of the PTA in the meantime and for the review of long-standing PTA cases to be expedited. Fourteen years since the war ended, tens of thousands of victims and their families continue to suffer in agony and grief as they await truth, justice and remedy. Truth-seeking alone will not be sufficient and must be accompanied by a clear commitment to accountability, including through an independent ad hoc special court. The High Commissioner has repeatedly repeatedly recommended that the government of Sri Lanka should establish a follow-up, independent and transparent investigation into the Easter Sunday attacks with international assistance and the full participation of victims and their representatives. Accountability is central to secure Sri Lanka's present and its future. While it remains the obligation of the Sri Lankan authorities to acknowledge past violations and under undertake credible accountability measures, this council and the member states can play an important and complex complementary role in advancing accountability. My office remains committed to supporting the government and the people of Sri Lanka in advancing reconciliation and accountability as well as the full enjoyment of human rights. Sri Lanka rejected the written update, its conclusion and recommendations. The content of the written update does not reflect the actual situation in Sri Lanka. The economic, social and financial stabilization Sri Lanka has achieved in the past year has been appreciated and acknowledged domestically and externally. Sri Lanka remains firmly committed to pursuing tangible progress on human rights through our domestic institutions and have made significant progress. Deliberations continue on the draft anti-terrorism bill with the aim of bringing it in line with international standards. Tangible progress has been made by independent domestic mechanisms, inter alia the Office on Missing Persons, Office for Reparations and Office for National Unity and Reconciliation. As a responsible member of the international community, Sri Lanka will continue to engage constructively with the UN in keeping with domestic priorities and policies as well as the international obligations voluntarily undertaken.